Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Greenberg and in this video I'm going to talk about a project that I implemented in my home using MicroPython. Uh, this is a presentation that I hoped to give at PyCon Germany a couple of weeks ago but due to uh, an illness I was uh, unable to attend so I'm recording this video now uh, for, for those who, uh, who were hoping to, to learn about this project. Uh, so the title of the presentation uh, was uh, MicroPython Hits My Home. Uh, and uh, so uh, you probably used to see me talk about Flask and uh, web development in general. Uh, so you may be wondering what's going on, what, what are you doing with MicroPython? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, in case you, uh, you don't know, I wrote a tutorial, a six-part tutorial for MicroPython uh, that is uh, freely available on my blog. So if you go to my blog, blog.miguelgreenberg.com, and then select uh, in the right side on the categories, select uh, MicroPython, you will see uh, all, all the articles that are part of this tutorial and uh, in this presentation I'm not going to talk in detail about the, the setup how, how to for, for example how to install MicroPython all those things I'm not going to discuss in detail but all those things are explained in very high detail in the tutorial so if what you see uh, today uh, interests you, I, I strongly encourage you to look at, you know, to visit my blog and follow the tutorial. So, uh, very good. So, um, in 2018, uh, a little bit over a year ago, I moved from uh, from Portland, Oregon, in the United States, to uh, to Ireland, and in Ireland, I rented a house, and I found that uh, the house was, uh, was actually cold and uh, I, I had to constantly be uh, fudging with, uh, with the heating controller. Uh, so uh, I, I did a little research and I found that, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure the reason, but uh, in Ireland, uh, heating is different <laughs> to what I was used to in, in the United States. Uh, so uh, many houses have this type of controller, uh, which is basically, if you, if you look at it, uh, th there's, there's a, a clock, right? You can, you can see the clock in the, in the inside. And then uh, there is uh, an outer ring that has uh, 24 hours. So, so it's marked from, uh, from 1 to 24. And uh, there are pins. Uh, I, I believe there are about six pins for each hour. Uh, and each pin uh, ba basically maps to 10 minutes, to a slot of uh, a 10 minute duration. So those pins uh, with, with your hand, you can, you can uh, push them out, in which uh, case they show red, or push them in, and, and then you don't see the red. And the, the, the way this works is all the slots, all the 10 minute slots that have the pins pushed out, uh, basically tell the the heating controller to run the heating so but basically you, you can decide at which times of day the heating runs or doesn't run uh, uh, in terms that that we software developers can understand basically what you're doing is uh configuring start stop pairs uh so, so you, you can tell it when when the heating starts and then when it stops and then when it starts again and and so on um, in addition to this, uh, these controllers typically have uh, two functions. Uh, you can see uh, those two round uh, buttons. One is labeled boost. And the idea is that uh, if in spite of your programming, uh, you're cold, then you push the boost button and then that runs the heating uh, on top of whatever programming you have. So, so you, you can run it usually for 30 minutes and then that boosts your, your heating. And then uh, the other one is called advance. And the idea of that one is that uh, 
if you're cold and you know that the heating is going to start in a little bit according to your programming when you click advance basically it, it runs the next event which could be a start or a stop uh, it runs it right now instead of at the at, at the time that it's programmed uh, so th this is this is a very simple controller that that's the type of thing that i see uh, most often here uh, some houses have controllers that are a little bit more advanced. Uh, so, so this one uh, it can be programmed in the same way. It can also uh, have start and stop times. Uh, to do that programming, you have to open the, the bottom half. Uh, it, it's, it's a little door that opens and then you get more buttons where you can program those uh, start and stop times. Uh, and, and this one, uh, you can see that it has three uh, different zones so it controls two zones uh, for heating and then the third one is for your water heater uh, typically the, the two zones are usually the downstairs and the upstairs um, but outside of that outside of the fact that it's a little bit more sophisticated in how you program it, it it's the same thing as the previous one you, you can set start and stop times um, some houses, not all of them, but, but some do, uh, have these thermostats in addition to the controllers, one of the, the previous two or, or similar. And with this, basically, uh, you can set up an override. So if the temperature reaches, for example, in, in this example, it's set to 20, uh, which is in Celsius, uh, which is about 70, 71 Fahrenheit for those of you in the States. Um, so when it reaches your desired temperature, then the heating stops running, even if the programming has the heating as running for, for a longer time. So, so this is how you, you save a little bit of heating and, and then uh, you, you don't get a house that's too hot. Uh, so uh, typically you, you get one of these on, if, if you have uh, two zones, like, like a, a downstairs and an upstairs, you get one of these on each level and then you can control your temperature this way. Uh, so, so this is this is Ireland. Now, uh, let me show you. Uh, I, I don't know. Over twenty years ago, when I moved to the United States, uh, the oldest controller that I've had in in my first house it was something like this, uh, which is completely different. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to ignore the fact that in the states, uh, many houses have uh, air conditioning AC. Uh, which is very rare for for homes uh, in Europe, right? So, so I'm going to ignore all the, the cooling side of th things. But the important things, if you look at the display, is that uh, there's a clock, same as you know the, the controllers here, uh, and then there's a temperature, and this one is in in uh, degrees Fahrenheit, so 70. Uh, and and then you get two arrows where you can say you can raise the temperature or lower the temperature. So basically what you're doing here is instead of controlling when heating starts or stops, you are controlling what temperature you want the house to be. And then uh, the, the, the heating controller decides when to run or when to stop based on that. And then uh, the, there's a program button uh, in, in the bottom row of buttons. And with the program button, uh, what you can do instead of program start and stop events, you program temperatures. So for example, what I used to do in my house in the States was to leave uh, the house at 70 degrees for uh, for the day, during the day. While I was there, I, and I, I worked from home, so I kept the, the heating at 70 throughout the day. But then at night, well, you know, when everyone's sleeping, there's no point in having the heat, uh, the heating running at 70. So I lowered it to like 66, 65 or something like that. And, and you can program it and you don't have to constantly be uh, having to mind the, uh, the heating. So uh, you can see the, the, the big difference here between the, the way uh, the heating is usually done in the States and here in Ireland. I, I'm not sure if other countries in Europe do it the same way or different, uh, but, but this is what I've seen here in Ireland. So uh, recently, in, in here in Ireland, there's there's a local company, a company based here in uh, in the country, that is selling these uh, state of the art. These are uh, 
basically highly advanced heating controllers to replace the the types of controllers that I showed you before. Uh, so the interesting thing that that I found about these is that uh, if you look at the display, they designed it exactly like like the very old one that I showed you first with uh, with a row of uh, of pins. Right, so the difference is that you you program it using the, that wheel and the buttons and and there's a menu and stuff, but uh, but at the end of the day you're still programming start and stop events. Uh, you can you can connect uh, a thermostat also, and that works exactly like the uh, the the wheel that I showed you uh, before. So uh, all, all of that works the same way. Uh, so. You can connect the thermostat, and that is good. Uh, you can see at the bottom there are boost buttons, and, and this is a three-zone controller, uh, so, so you can boost it. And then uh, the, the boost button, uh, tip, the default is to run for 30 minutes, but you can, uh, you can also boost it for longer if you want. Uh, one thing that is very interesting is that, uh, as I said, this is a, uh, an advanced controller. Uh, it allows you to to send heating commands through text message, through SMS, or uh, there, there's a website where you can go and you can program your controller, and there's also an app for your phone. Uh, so that, that is nice. Uh, so you, you can, for example, trigger a boost, if you're called, uh, from, from the phone or from, from a website. Uh, so, so that's very convenient. But uh, on the on the other side, the uh, the thing that I I, I think it's 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 a shame is that they haven't really advanced the uh, the way uh, you know you you work with your heating controller. Uh, you you still having to to work with the start and stop events, which of course as the seasons change, you have to constantly change as well. So you know it, it, it's not that great, uh, and uh, and I still cannot do. What I did, uh, what I what I did in the states, which is to uh, to lower my temperature uh, at night, and then you know ha having seventy degrees during the day and sixty six degrees at night. There's still no way to do that, and this is supposed to be a state of the art controller. So uh, another thing that I found with, with the uh, the thermostat uh, units that come with this device, uh, and I'm not sure why, but they're they're inaccurate. Uh, at least on 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 the house, I, I'm I'm not in that house anymore. The house that I did this, uh, but in in this house that I implemented this project, uh, the two sensors in the two levels they they were highly inaccurate. Uh, I, I put a, a thermometer of my own, a digital thermometer next to the sensor, and I always got uh, highly different readings. So basically, I I I couldn't get the the thing to work, uh, you know, in a way that that made sense. And I ended up having to boost the system every time I was called. So, so the whole day I was thinking, okay, am I, am I called now? Yeah, maybe I am. So I'm, I'm gonna boost it. And basically, that that's that's the best way I found to use the system. So I grew frustrated. So uh, what I decided to do is to to build an American style thermostat uh, and then use the the functions of. Uh, of this device, which allows me to control it uh, via the internet, and and basically ignore the thermostats that came with the uh, with this device, and just you know s set it to never run, right? So, so the uh, the wheel was completely uh, blank. So I, I didn't set up any start or stop events. I didn't set up any uh, temperature uh, ranges that I wanted. So it, it, it was all clear. And then what I did is uh, I decided to create a, a little device that will get the temperature. And if it wasn't the temperature that I decided for that time of day, that it will run a boost uh, by either sending a text message or sending a web request. And then at the end of the boost, after 30 minutes, it will reevaluate. It will check the temperature again. And if, if it was still cold, it will run the, uh, the heating one more time. And uh, at night, I will do the same, but I will use a lower temperature. So uh, let me show you how that works. So, so this, is, uh, this is the project. This is the hardware. Uh, and I, I have one of these for real. 
that I can show you. Uh, so uh, let's see how this looks. So this is a project. You, you can see that it matches the picture. Uh, so basically, there are uh, there are two components. Uh, so this this is the uh, this is a microcontroller. Uh, it's an ESP eighty two sixty six uh, chip, uh, and this comes with uh, with uh, the, the the chip is this gray box here. You can see it also in the real one. Uh, it comes with a, a board, which is basically the blue uh, blue around it, uh, and uh, this is called a development board. It comes with uh, a number of things that make it easy to connect uh, to devices and to prototype your projects. So they, uh, this, this platform that you see with lots of little holes, it's called a breadboard. And you can, uh, you can insert the microcontroller on it and all the, all the pins that are in the back of the microcontroller match the the holes in the breadboard so you can insert it this is a standard so all the components have the pins at the same distance and then you can connect devices by uh, by using a, a lego approach of sorts uh, where you plug things in uh, in the breadboard so we have the microcontroller and then uh, this white device is a temperature and humidity sensor and basically you uh, you stick it you, you stick the two components on different parts of the breadboard and then you can connect them with wires and these wires uh, you, you can also, you, you can get they're specifically designed for this purpose so these are wires that have uh, little pins on both ends they're called jumper wires and Basically, you can use them to connect uh, the, the different components that are installed on the breadboard. So uh, you can see there are four four wires for this circuit. Uh, so components uh, need power to run. So that means that they they need to connect uh, two wires to a power source. Um, so the uh, the microcontroller receives power from a USB cable. You can see it, it's plugged in right there. And then uh, several of the pins, uh, you can see some, some pins uh, are labeled 3D3. Uh, there's one here and a couple more in the bottom row. So those are pins that provide power. And uh, I connected the, the left pin in the uh, temperature sensor to to one of those and then to close the circuit you also need a ground connection and there are GND pins uh, there are, I believe there are four pins also distributed around this uh, the, 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 the top and bottom rows of the microcontroller and you need to connect one to uh, to the rightmost pin in the sensor so you can see those are here also uh, the, the red, which is the positive, the one that provides power, and the black, which is the, the ground connection. And this is how the device gets power. Uh, the next one is the, the blue wire, which connects the middle pin in the sensor uh, to a data pin in the microcontroller. And this is how we can communicate with this device. This is how data can go from the microcontroller to the device or vice versa. Uh, here I picked a data pin called E2. Uh, there, are, there are a bunch of them that are available to use in your projects to connect things. And I, I picked that one. It could have been any, any of them. Uh, OK, and then finally, there is uh, the brown pin here, which, which actually I, I've used, if you look at the real one, I've used a white uh, wire for this one. Uh, this one is sort of a, um, a weird thing. Uh, so one of the features that I decided that I wanted is uh, to use the, the deep, sleep, deep sleep feature of the microcontroller. Uh, the idea is that I, I don't want to have the microcontroller powered at all times because I don't really need to. 
so my idea was to do, uh, to get it to do a a check on the temperature and and then do whatever needed to be done and then go to sleep and then sleep for five minutes for example and then after five minutes it, it'll wake up and then repeat the check again adjust do uh, if the heating needed to be started it will do so but, but then it, it will go to sleep again um, so uh, when when the microcontroller goes to uh, enter enters this uh, the deep sleep mode uh, it needs a way to be woken up after the period of time um, so the microcontroller uh, basically gets uh, all the power removed it, it doesn't consume almost almost any power the only subsystem that keeps power is the clock because basically we're programming the microcontroller to wake up at a certain amount of time. Um, so the way that works is if, if you see this brown wire it's connected from the D0 uh, pin which is the uh, and you don't see it here but this this pin also doubles as an alarm uh, pin. It's connected into the reset pin uh, in the bottom row RST. And the idea here is that when I, if, if I say to the microcontroller to go to sleep for five minutes after five minutes there's going to be a signal going out of the alarm pin and it's going to go into the reset pin that will trigger the board to reset and it's going to wake up it's going to be exactly the same as if it's being powered on for the first time you do whatever it needs to do and then uh, then it, it'll trigger another deep sleep and then the cycle will repeat so uh, so basically this is the hardware uh, just you know explained quickly that's basically how it works uh, in terms of code this is the the main code for uh, for this uh, for, for this project uh, so you can see some functions are colored green those are auxiliary functions that are part of this and then uh, if, if you look in the uh, in the description, uh, if, if you're looking at, at this on my blog, then it's going to be in the in the blog article. Uh, if you're looking at this on YouTube, you, you will see it in the description of the video. Uh, I'm going to put a link to where you can get the, the entire code, the whole code. So, so you will see the code for all these auxiliary functions. Uh, but basically, this is, uh, this is the, the main.py function, which in MicroPython uh, is the the file that runs automatically when the, the board boots. So, so this code will run. Uh, you can see that I have a try accept, and this is if, in case there are any errors. So if, if there are any errors that, uh, that are unexpected, then what I do is I print the exception, <clears throat> and this is for, for logging purposes. If, if I'm looking at the, uh, the output, I will see the error. Uh, and then if I'm not looking at the output, then the show error function uh, blinks a light. There, there's a little light. I'll, I'll show you uh, during the demo portion of this. Uh, I'll show you how that works. But there's a little light in the board, and then that light will blink, and then I will know that there was an error that way. Uh, assuming uh, everything works, then the first thing that I do is I connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't mention this, but this board comes with Wi-Fi, so you can connect to uh, your Wi-Fi router, and, and then basically you're connected to the Internet. Uh, unlike normal computers, this, this board is unable to, uh, to keep time uh, because it doesn't have a battery or a anything of that sort, so, so when it loses power, it forgets the time. Uh, so, so there's no way to get the time of day, which I needed to uh, basically decide what temperature I want at, at a given time. So I implemented a function that sends a web request to a, a time API, and that gives me the, the time of day. Uh, the get temperature function then uh, connects to the uh, to the, uh, the this white device, the, the temperature sensor, and gets me the temperature. Uh, I do a little bit of logging. I print the time and the temperature. And then I check if I'm uh, in a boost. So if, if I'm in a boost, then there's nothing to do. The, the heating is running. So that's it. But if I'm not in a boost, 
I call this thermostat function, which uh, applies the logic that uh, uses the uh, the current temperature, the current time, and with the current time, I get my desired temperature, my target temperature for that time. And then uh, this function returns true if it decides that heating needs to be running. So, so if, if the current temperature is too low for, for the current time. So then this will return true. And then I call this other function that's boost, which basically sends the request that runs the heating. And that's it. So I do all this. And then at the end of it, I call uh, deep, deep sleep. And basically that will send the, uh, the board to sleep for five minutes. And then in five minutes, uh, everything will, will start from scratch. The, boot will, um, the board will reboot and everything will run again. So you can see it, it's actually very simple. Uh, so um, the last portion of this presentation is going to be a quick demo. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show you this for real. First of all, because I'm not in the house where I use this anymore. So, so I don't have a way to, uh, to run heating uh, uh, in this house. Uh, but I, I have a simulated uh, boost that, uh, that I can show you. Uh, so I'm going to switch to a terminal and then show you how, uh, how this works a little bit. OK, so uh, let's do a little demo of this uh, application. Um, so uh, the application has three Python files. Uh, I'm going to start with the, uh, the easy one. So config.py is basically a, uh, an application, a, a module where I store the settings that are used by, by the application. And this is a good practice. I, I also do this uh, when I write uh, web applications with Flask and with anything else. Uh, it's always a good idea to keep the settings separate from the logic. So, so this is basically uh, the, the, the five settings that I need for this application. Uh, they're, they're basically written as uh, variables. And then they are imported in, uh, in, the, other two, uh, in the other two modules as necessary. Uh, this one is the pin number for the temperature sensor. Uh, this uh, DHT22 is, is the name of the sensor. This, this is a DHT22 temperature sensor. Uh, so this is the data pin. Uh, if you remember, was the, uh, the, blue, the blue connection uh, that connected into the D2 uh, pin of the microcontroller. Uh, the naming of the, the pins doesn't agree with the numbers. Uh, so D2 is GPIO4. And I, I explained this in the tutorial, how, how to know what number to use. Uh, but it, it, it's, it is a little bit confusing. Uh, so this one is number four. Uh, I'm, I also mentioned that I use a, a little uh, LED light that's on the board to show errors. That is pin number two. Uh, and then I have my uh, my network name, my Wi-Fi network name and password, which of course I changed here. Uh, and then finally, uh, the interval, the uh, the deep sleep interval, uh, which I mentioned before, I, I settle on five minutes. So so this this application runs every five minutes, and then goes to sleep, and then in five minutes the the ball reboots and then it starts from from the beginning once again. Uh, and this is given in seconds, so I set it uh, to 5 times 60, uh, which is 5 minutes. So, uh, so this is config. Uh, the, uh, the main .py uh, function is, uh, is uh, special. Uh, basically, MicroPython uh, automatically runs main.py if it finds it. Uh, there are actually two, two uh, special files. It's boot.py uh, and main.py. Typically boot.py is used by MicroPython itself, uh, even though you, you can change it if you want, but MicroPython creates a boot.py in your board when you install it. Uh, so I typically leave it alone. And then main.py is typically where you, where you write your application or, or the beginning, you know, the main module of your application. Uh, so this is exactly what I showed you before in the slide. 
uh, I believe the only difference here is that I omitted the imports in this slide. But other than that, uh, this is actually uh, the, the, the main application, what I showed you before. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have hit.py, which is the module where I have all the auxiliary functions. And uh, here are all those functions that I showed in green uh, when I showed you the slide with the code. Uh, so uh, let's see if we can make this work. So um, I'm going to use this tool called RShell to connect to the MicroPython board. Uh, so RShell is a, a Python tool. So it uses, it runs on your computer uh, and it runs on Python 3 uh, and it knows how to connect to the MicroPython board and uh, give you a, a, a list of functions, a very useful functions once it is connected. So you, you get this uh, little shell and from here you can, uh, you can copy files from the computer to the, to the uh, MicroPython board, which has a file system. Uh, uh, you can also open a, uh, a Python shell, a REPL session. So I'm going to do that. And here I'm basically running micro MicroPython on the board and I see the output on my computer. And in case you're wondering, this, this runs over the uh, over a serial connection that runs on the on the USB cable. So, so this is uh, hooked up to my computer on on a USB cable, the, the normal cable that you use to charge uh, your your smartphone, and that powers the device and also provides the uh, the serial connection. Uh, so I'm going to import heat, which is the module with all these functions. Uh, so I'm going to start by doing Wi-Fi connect, uh, which I believe it, it was already connected probably. Uh, it shows, uh, so this is for logging purposes, it shows the, the IP address and a bunch of other network, uh, network uh, values. Uh, and then let's see, uh, let's look at the, uh, the second function, get current time. So as I mentioned uh, before, the board doesn't have concept of a clock doesn't have a clock so if you need to know the current time then the, the easiest way is to send a request and there is a requests package it's it's actually called u requests uh, if, if you if you look here uh, I'm, I'm renaming it when I import it uh, there are many uh, many libraries in MicroPython are called like the Python counterparts with a u prefix so u time as well and just to, to write code that I'm familiar with I rename them on the imports uh, so so get current time sends a request to this world time API uh, to get the UTC time uh, so let's see if that works so get current time uh, there we go. And this is uh, basically I'm, I'm getting the, the Unix time. So, so this is a Unix timestamp. Uh, uh, so, so then I, I use this as my current time in UTC. And here I'm, um, you can say that I'm, I'm a little bit sloppy. I'm, I'm enjoying being in Ireland and being so close to UTC. Um, half the year I'm, I'm exactly at the UTC time and the other half I'm one hour away. Uh, so here I'm, I decided not to worry about uh, time zones and I just get the current time which is uh, in UTC and then I don't worry about it. I, I use it as is. Uh, if, if you are in a different uh, region, of course, you will need to adjust the time to your local time. Uh, but, you know, for, for me, I'm lucky here. Here, uh, I, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, OK, so that was uh, the current time. Uh, get temperature and this one if, if you look at the code you can see that I'm, I'm using this dht.dht22 class this comes with MicroPython uh, this, uh, this uh, white uh, temperature sensor the dht22 is fully supported comes with drivers uh, that are part of the standard library in MicroPython so I basically all, all I need to do is connect with the pin number 
and then call the measure function which basically asks the sensor to read the temperature and then just return it so let's see what we have we have uh, right here I have 21 degrees Celsius 0.6 uh, so uh, we can keep going on this um, we have the, the boost functions there are actually two functions boosted basically returns true or false if we're running the heating right now or not uh, and this this is going to say no right now oops I'm sorry I need to send the current time so I'm going to set the current time to this that I've got and then pass it and when I ask if I'm running the, uh, the heating it says no and uh, the way it knows is because it basically reads a file that's also stored in the MicroPython file system uh, which has the time, the Unix time, where the boost ends. So if that time is in the past, that means that right now we're not running, uh, we're not running the heating. So then the the next function, to boost, is the one that starts a boost. And this is the part where I, I don't, I'm, I'm not showing you the real request that runs the boost. Uh, first of all, because I'm I'm not really sure. The company that sells these uh, these devices will be okay with this. Uh, I I don't want to get in trouble, basically, but uh, uh, they they provide a way to do it from a web browser, so you can look at the uh, the web browser to see you know what requests are being sent and then repeat that. Uh, but in uh, in this case, I'm I'm using a fake fake request, which just returns a successful response. Uh, but then uh, after the success I update the boost file so that then boosted uh, starts returning true for uh, for 30 minutes so this is now plus 30 minutes so let's do heat.boost I'm passing current time this is going to send the request and I've got an error uh, what's going on here? Mm, okay, I got a failure, and then the next one uh, it worked. Interesting. Uh, so now, if I say boosted, then it's going to say true, and this is going to be true for uh, for the next thirty minutes. But of course, when I say 30 minutes, it, it's the, the value that you're passing here. The board itself doesn't have a concept of time. Um, so the, the thermostat function uh, determines what is my desired temperature for the current time. So basically what I do here, and, and this, this is very simple. First of all, I take the, the current time, which is an Unix uh, timestamp, and I calculate what's the current hour from uh, from 0 to 23 and then uh, my target temperature is 19 degrees uh, between the the hours of 7 and 22 which is 10 p.m and then if it's not within that time then i use 17. so 19 during the day 17 during the night uh, very simple scheduling and then based on that target temperature and the current temperature it decides if the heating needs to run or not and it returns true or false based on that uh, so super simple and then finally the uh, uh, actually two more the the show error function is the one I mentioned that I use uh, if there's any unexpected exception then I run this function and this is how I can find out that something didn't work when I'm uh, when, when I'm not watching the when I'm not connected to the board and I'm running it um, basically it's standalone so if I say heat show error I'm gonna see if I can put it right there and there is the error so it blinks a few times and then it returns so that's show error 
then if, if I see that, then I know that I need to connect and investigate what's going on. Uh, and then finally, the, uh, the last function is the deep sleep function, which once again uses uh, functions that come with the MicroPython library. So this is basically you copy it from the documentation. Uh, and of course, once again, if you want more details, the tutorial in my blog will, will give you all the details. Uh, but yeah, I can I can say deep sleep here, and then the board uh, is going to go to sleep. I'm going to lose my con my connection right here. The, uh, the this shell is going to uh, to be closed, and then for five minutes nothing's gonna happen, and then in five minutes I'm gonna get the shell back when when the board uh, reboots. So I'm gonna do it, and that's gone. Now I don't have a, a connection anymore. Um, so so this is basically it. it it's uh, it's a pretty interesting project. Uh, uh, and uh, basically th this is the first thing I did. And then after this, I decided to, uh, to, to, to create the tutorial. And in the tutorial, I'll cover uh, a few other things besides this, uh, this small project. So, uh, so you, you will find uh, a number of other things there. Um, so, so yeah, I hope this was uh, an interesting project. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. And uh, yeah, I hope you decide to, uh, to do a project of your own using this as uh, motivation. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.